Thank you, uh, Ricardo. Uh, it's, it's really a pleasure to be here. Ricardo has, has put on an, an incredible conference. Uh, there's a few things before I get started with the formal presentation that I wanted to say is that uh, Eventbrite, we're, we're just launching, uh, we're, we're launching in about a month here in Portugal. We're very excited about it. We pre-announced it. I, I'm thrilled to be here to uh, to be in Lisbon and and uh, to talk to a, a lot of different uh, users that are using the the English and clunky version that hasn't been localized uh, to to your country and and we're going to be working hard to bring you a great service uh, that that uh, you're going to really love. Um, so really tremendously excited uh, about that. Secondly is. I'm an, uh, an entrepreneur, and, and I know I've, I've spoken to many of the people in the room here. Uh, there are many entrepreneurs out there, and I want to just remind everyone: we're uh, Eventbrite is a company that uh, this year will process over a half a billion U.S. dollars uh, across our platform. We have 200 uh, employees, but we started as three founders. Uh, and we started as three founders in a rundown warehouse in the South Market District of, of San Francisco, and, and we really started during the, the first during the credit crisis of, of 2008 was was those tough years that we all remember that uh, a lot of you may be feeling now here. Uh, but the tough times are always the best time to start a company. Uh, they're the best time to really be building because you really learn how to survive uh, in the hard times. So Eventbrite is something that, that didn't just uh, become massive and blow up overnight, as we say. It was something that, that we've been working on for six years. And, and a good chunk of that time, a good portion of that time, was spent bootstrapping the business, um, not taking salaries, working, you know, doing all sorts of odd things to try to get by and make ends meet. Uh, and merely by sticking with it, uh, we got to where we are today. I'm really excited to, to share our story, uh, and, and that's about Eventbrite, but a lot of lessons here. I also want to reflect back uh, at the end of my presentation on entrepreneurship and, and bringing that to Lisbon and, and to Portugal. So Eventbrite, we, uh, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a product of Silicon Valley, and there's a lot of excitement and innovation happening in Silicon Valley. Uh, and, and we're now seeing that all over the world. But there's also a lot of criticism uh, that's, that's happening and that I'm hearing, uh, and that is that we're spending a lot of time, of time in front of computers. So one study out there says that three out of five people spend more time in front of their computers than they do with their significant others, with their spouses or boyfriends or girlfriends or so on. Uh, it's a staggering number to me. Another uh, figure is that, that uh, American, Americans under 25 spend about seven and a half hours a day in front of a television or in front of an electronic device or computer. And there's been a lot of critique of, 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 the, you know, of Twitter. It's 140 characters, and, and what can you really express in 140 characters? And I see things as, as very different. Uh, I see that technology uh, is something that has actually united us more. Uh, it's something that has allowed us to connect uh, and communicate. And really what Eventbrite is all about, it's an online platform. We're building an online platform uh, to bring people together offline. Humans are inherently social creatures. We're social beings. And in the, the 1940s, there is a, a psychologist named uh, Abraham Maslow, and he created a pyramid of, of need. So that pyramid spoke about, uh, at, the, at the base levels, human beings need food and water to survive, but also what really defines us is that uh, humans uh, are social creatures, and that, uh, that sense of belonging, that, that uh, sense of human gathering is fundamental uh, to, to human survival and, and human needs. Uh, and really while we're spending all this time online, what it's helping us do is helping us connect and it's helping us to, to power live experiences. So Eventbrite uses an online platform and technology to bring people together offline. 
and that is more than just merely tickets to a concert or to a conference or so on. When you attend all these different events like the conference here today, we have a chance to meet and interact and learn and grow uh, in much more of a fashion than a synchronous method such as, or asynchronous method such as the television. Let's look at uh, just some of the things, the events that uh, Eventbrite is powering. So it's a, it's a broad category. When I see this, this large list up here, I think of uh, eBay in the 1990s and all the different categories of e-commerce goods. What we've seen sprout out up on the Eventbrite platform is that same exciting diversity of, of different uses for a platform. Let's take three in particular. Uh, photography classes, food festivals, and fundraisers. These are three, uh, three types of events that, that uh, we see on Eventbrite. And what we've done is we've created a simple and easy to use solution uh, for these types of events to help our customers sell more tickets. And I'm going to tell you a bit about how uh, we, we do that. First, we allow you to publish an event page. And it's uh, in, in part of what I would say of the importance of, of web properties and now mobile properties is simplicity. We made it as easy to publish as publishing a Tumblr blog. Enter your details of your event uh, and publish. And once you've published, you've created your event page, we provide a whole uh, suite of tools, tools to allow you to uh, spread your message through the various social networks, to use email, to use widgets, uh, to, to get the word out about your event, uh, high and low. And third, uh, collection. Payments have always been a very hairy part of, uh, a difficult and challenging part of uh, the, the ecosystem of online and, and we've made that just drop dead simple. We'll launch here in Portugal first with, with PayPal and then expand to a broader range of payment, uh, payment types over time. Finally, what you, what you don't see in typical platforms is a lot of analytical views into what, what you're selling and wh uh, where you're selling. We're providing uh, geographic maps, we're providing insights and analytics and and really helping you uh, learn about your customers, have that customer data, and thus sell more tickets. Let's talk about a, a few different customers that use our platform. Uh, Bibby came from a large retailer, a big corporate job, and she started teaching cooking classes, uh, and she used the Eventbrite plat platform. Today, she's franchised that or grown that to four different cities, actually serves 50,000 uh, different uh, it has served 50,000 different students to date uh, on our platform. Another example is Megan. She holds a endurance uh, running race, a, a, a 10K run. She's been, running, or she's been holding it for four years and, and does that in over 10 cities. And finally, to really speak about the length and the breadth of, of Eventbrite, is that in September, we ticketed the Black Eyed Peas concert in New York City. Uh, New York held a, uh, a concert that was hosted to raise money for, uh, in awareness for, for poverty. Over 60,000 people uh, used Eventbrite to, to buy tickets and attend that event. And so what we're talking here is really about creating a platform that can serve from the smallest event organizer that has just a few people, such as a photography class, all the way up to these mega concerts. That's really uh, the, the Eventbrite platform in a nutshell. And I'm gonna to try to echo back to your own entrepreneurial experiences, but in building the company, in building Eventbrite, we've really ridden the wave of three different uh, trends out there. These trends affect all of us in the room. Uh, they, they're impacting the Silicon Valley, uh, and I'm gonna speak about them in particular uh, related to our own uh, business. First is social media, how that has over the years had a massive impact on our business. Next is the mobile phenomenon, and third is big data. So social media, 
Uh, when we started Eventbrite, which was way back in 2006, we felt, well, we were going to grow. We were gonna, people were going to discover us through Google. We were going to do SEO, uh, you know, construct our site in such a way that, the, that search was going to be the primary driver of our site. And Google drives a tremendous amount of traffic to our site. But what we saw organically happening were that people were coming to Eventbrite from Facebook. And we were trying to better understand that because that traffic was starting to surge until uh, you know, now Facebook is the single largest driver of traffic. So let's try to break down and explain why that was the case. There were two reasons. One is that we very early on integrated with Facebook's API, uh, event API, and so an event organizer could easily publish. We gave our event organizers a one button publish where you could publish your Eventbrite event and republish it into your own social graph with Facebook events on, uh, on Facebook. And that was just a, a wonderful synergy and partnership and integration. But what was really driving traffic was something more fundamental. And that is, relates back to this inherent social nature of, of human beings. And that is that when somebody attends an event, they often want to share that with their friends if it's a social event, or their colleagues if it's a professional event. And we were seeing originally people just cutting and pasting the URL of the, the event page back into their Facebook newsfeed and sharing that with their friends. We then connected heavily with, with Facebook uh, through Facebook Connect and saw an explosion of growth from that. In fact, every time somebody shares uh, on a, a, an event on Facebook from Eventbrite, it drives an additional uh, two euros to, uh, to, to the organizer. So each share by a customer, uh, and that is customer marketing, is really helping drive this, this phenomenal growth. If you look at more social events, and social events such as concerts, uh, it's driving an additional 10 euros in, in ticket sales for every share. And on top of that, it's also deriving a lot of awareness back. It drives, on average, about 15 visits back to the site. So let's look at that in aggregate numbers. I uh, have to obscure things. You know, we've got all these famous bloggers here in the audience, so I don't want to give away my numbers. Uh, but you can see the growth of the business up through 2008. And then we in in integrated Facebook Connect and really saw the business boom. So this is a very important lesson, and, and that is really get out of the way of your customers. When you see your customers doing something, uh, when you see an organic activity on your site, don't stop that. Uh, encourage that and, and uh, really grow into it. I, I think my favorite example was watching PayPal struggle when it initially launched. And then one day, people started using uh, PayPal, uh, eBay sellers started using PayPal on the site. And they saw this, they integrated with that, and the rest is history. So remember to watch your customers, see what they're doing, and learn from that. Let's go into the second trend uh, that we just can't ignore, and that's the seismic shift uh, from the desktop to mobile. Smartphones have, have grown massively. We've seen all the numbers out there. Uh, there is a venture capitalist, famous venture capitalist named Mary Meeker, who gave a presentation just a month ago. Uh, in, in uh, New York, and she spoke, uh, she put up some interesting data, uh, and that was that in India, for example, mobile uh, smartphone mobile usage has surpassed web usage, and we expect that to follow uh, in the world throughout. We've been able to use mobile devices because they've become commoditized, because they've become so inexpensive. We've been able to use mobile devices to do things that only the, the traditional ticketers and only the biggest customers could afford before. So we built a scanning app uh, on, on an iPhone and on an uh, Android device that each week scans over 30,000 customers uh, for, through a number of different organizations. So in the past, when you'd go to a football match or see a concert, you would have your ticket and it would be scanned by this very expensive and clunky device. This can now be done on any iPhone or any Android device. Uh, and we think that's pretty revolutionary. And we call this democratizing. 
uh, again, bringing things that were only available to the, the highest end of customers and bringing it to the mass market. It's a very important trend uh, in Silicon Valley, and mobile is playing a very key role in this. We've also launched uh, what we call At The Door, and that is an iPad tablet device, and that's for allowing will call, that's for swiping credit cards, uh, and it allows venues to, to collect money and, and really bridge the gap between the online sales and the offline sales as well, all done through something that can be downloaded through the, the App Store. So we've talked about social and mobile. Uh, let's talk a bit about big data. This is, uh, this is really the byproduct of a lot of great open source services, MongoDB, um, a lot of ad advancements in, uh, in cheaper uh, commoditized storage has given us a wealth of data that we can use for uh, all different purposes. We, we've seen these three uh, commerce leaders, Amazon, Pandora, and Netflix, uh, all really benefit from, in the case of Amazon, merchant or, or product recommendations. If you go onto the Amazon site, you'll be recommended uh, products based on what you've bought or what you've looked at before. In the case of Pandora, you listen to certain music, it makes recommendations, and these are called algorithmic or data recommendations uh, based on what other people are listening to and applying it in your case. And finally, Netflix. If I like these certain films, uh, the Netflix algorithms are gonna recommend these. In a similar means, we have a data services team at Eventbrite that is recommending now events to our attendees. Uh, you've attended these events in the past. We think that you'll like uh, these events as well. And in effect, we have this mutually beneficial relationship where our consumers or attendees are finding great new things to do and our organizers are seeing greater and greater ticket sales and, get, and gaining new customers that they would just not have uh, had exposure to before. We also use big data to stop fraud. Whenever you have a self-service payments uh, platforms such as Eventbrite or a, or a PayPal or so on, you, you're battling uh, the fraudsters constantly and, and building sophisticated fraud algorithms has been something that's derived um, from all the data that we collect. We offer a friction-free experience when you are launching a web service or, um, uh, or a mobile service, where really you, one really needs to think about how to minimize the number of clicks or fields or entry points and make it just drop dead simple and looking at it not just from a usability standpoint of what the customer is doing but also how somebody how customers convert on a quantitative base, basis has been tremendously uh, powerful for driving our business to this half billion dollar uh, gross ticket sales run rate and finally uh, we're working on in delivering advanced payouts the status quo of ticketing has been when your event ends, you get your money. And that doesn't help when you need to market your event, when you need to uh, really get out, uh, get the message out, uh, reserve venues, put down deposits, and so on. And we've worked through different algorithms uh, to be able to pay customers out that we've never met before. And we do that on, in risk-based analysis. So we've talked about these three trends. Let's talk about the, the actual numbers of Eventbrite users. So in 2011, we had 21 million uh, attendees attend Eventbrite events all around the world. What's very interesting about that is two thirds of those, uh, about 70% of those are actually free uh, users. They've attended events on Eventbrite that are free and you would say, you know, why would you have a free service like that? Or why would you have a service where only 30% of, of attendees are paying. Remember that those 30% are gonna, are gonna drive this year a half a billion dollars in ticket sales, and that 70% is really doing something amazing, and that's r raising awareness of Eventbrite, getting our brand out there, uh, acting as, in a sense, as a, a free marketing vehicle. So what we've created is this wonderful flywheel of growth where more attendees attend more events and more attendees actually convert to event organizers. So buyers converting to sellers. 
to the extent today where that's the number one source of, of acquisition. We hadn't intended that, intended that in the beginning. We were looking at paying, at spending lots of money on advertising, but when we saw our free service take off like this and we encouraged the free service, we found, again, we learned uh, the, this, this very important lesson, uh, where, which has become our major source of, of customer acquisition. So where are we going? We, you know, we've often, and I'm, I'm trying to frame this in a global tone because I'm here in, in Lisbon, uh, but in the United States, I think in Silicon Valley, one of the things we suffer is, is this tunnel vision and that Silicon Valley tends to think still too much in terms of the world as the United States market. And what's really important now is that we, we live in a global market that most of the internet traffic happens outside of the United States. It's happening in Portugal, it's happening in Russia, it's happening in China, uh, and in many other areas. And as a entrepreneur and as an investor, I'm telling entrepreneurs to really think globally sooner and, and not looking at borders in, in the same way that I think that, that we did 10 years ago. Uh, in our own case, we found organically uh, a customer sign up in, in Mexico, for example, uh, just this one case, and it was a salsa festival, and actually 60,000 people attended that, that salsa festival. That was an organic event. It was one of our biggest events ever held, uh, and you know, it happened outside the United States with no sales or marketing or otherwise. We now, as you can see these dots on, on the map here, uh, are going live uh, in, in many different countries around the world, and you'll see uh, Portugal is, is up there as well, that we're, we're as, again, excited to pre-announce it going live next month. We talked a lot about, uh, I've, I've spoken a lot about social recommendations and learning about uh, the customer. So really based on what type of events you're attending, but also based on what type of, uh, of interest or who you're connected to socially or through LinkedIn or so on, we're making better recommendations in, in serving the consumer. And we just can't be more excited about the, the direction of, of Eventbrite in the future. So I'm, I'm running out of time and I want to leave enough time for, for Q&A, but really in closing, uh, just to emphasize, because I know we have a lot of entrepreneurs in the office, watch for those trends that can open up new markets. In our case, it really was um, social, it really was mobile, it was big data. But what are those other things that are happening that are changing the, the technology landscape, the scene, that are making your startup available? Be open to, to new opportunities. Be very observant. Watch what's happening uh, with, with your business. Watch your customers. As, as we saw, uh, Facebook became such an important piece, and that was organic originally. And also, uh, our free service became such an important driver, something that we never expected. So really lean in, uh, in into those successes. And finally, stay true to your core values. Eventbrite is, it can be, can be described as a ticketing company, but we're really here to, to bring people together, to drive social experiences, to drive these live experiences where we can learn and grow and share and be entertained. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd love to take some questions. Thank you, Kevin.